So hybridization and sigma bonds. So hybridization is not an easy topic, but we're gonna make sense of it. But the first thing I wanna do is actually go through all the information about hybridization and sigma and pi bonds that I think you should have memorized. So on the test, having this information memorized will not only save you time, but it will help you understand things that are a little bit more theoretically difficult. So the first thing I want you to understand is that a region of electron density is simply a lone pair, a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. These are, all, these are all examples of one region of electron density. The second thing I want you to memorize is that the number of regions of electron density correspond to a certain hybridization around an atom. So for example, if an atom has four regions of electron density surrounding it, its hybridization is sp3. And you can memorize this chart, that'll help you out. And also you need to understand that a sigma bond is simply a single bond between two atoms. And then a pi bond is a second or third bond between two atoms. So you can see here a double bond. So we started out with this one single bond down here, that's the sigma bond, but then this is the second bond up here, that's gonna be the pi bond. And then a triple bond, so we had one single bond down here, that was the sigma bond, and then this is the second bond, that's gonna be the first pi bond, and then the third bond here is gonna be the second pi bond. So I wanna go through this example here and we can test out this, this information that we just uh, hopefully memorized. So here we've got uh, a complicated molecular structure, certainly more complicated than most uh, compounds we see in Gen Chem. And I've pointed to several different atoms and I wanna know their hybridization. But first I want you to tell me the total number of sigma and pi bonds in this entire molecule. Well, we know that a single bond counts as one sigma bond, a double bond counts as one sigma and one pi bond, and a triple bond counts as one sigma and two pi. So let's go through here and start counting these up. So I see, let's start here, one sigma bond, two sigma bonds, three sigma bonds, four sigma bonds, this counts as one more, so five sigma bonds, six sigma bonds, seven sigma bonds, and eight sigma bonds. So we have eight total sigma. And then let's do the pi. So remember the pi is the second or third bond that two atoms make with one another. So here we have one pi bond. We already counted the one sigma bond. So there's one pi bond. And then here we have another pi bond and then a third pi bond. So this triple bond, remember, is one sigma, two pi. Double bonds are one sigma, one pi. So we have a total of one, two, three pi bonds. Okay, what about the hybridization? So for this oxygen here, how do we figure out its hybridization? Well, we can count the number of regions of electron density around the oxygen, and then we know that's gonna to correspond to a certain hybridization. So the oxygen here has one, two, three, four regions of electron density. So it is sp3 hybridized. And we'll talk about what this means, but for now I just want you to be able to solve these quickly. So this carbon here, how many regions of electron density? One, two, three. So it is sp2 hybridized. What about this last carbon here? It has one, two regions of electron density surrounding it. So it is sp hybridized. Okay, so now that we've gotten this information out of the way, I wanna go into more of the theory about what hybridization means and how atoms actually mix their orbitals and hybridize them in order to bond with other atoms. As promised, I wanna go into what's actually going on when an atom hybridizes its orbitals. So remember, we're talking about electron orbitals here, and that's how atoms bond with one another, with electron orbitals. So notice how we need a requirement of at least two regions of electron density to have hybridization. This is because hybridization occurs when things bond. So I wanna remind you that the electron configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, so that we can go through some examples using hybridization of the atom carbon. So this is the baseline electron configuration of carbon uh, written out in this notation. So the 1s level, we've got a pair of electrons. 2s level, we've got a pair of electrons. And then the 2p level, we know we have three orbitals total, and one of them is filled with a pair of electrons. 
So let's see how this changes when carbon hybridizes its electron orbitals in order to bond more effectively with other atoms. So the first example here is CH4 or methane. So notice we have four total regions of electron density. So this is sp3 hybridized and they're all single bonds. So we have four sigma bonds and no pi bonds. So how does carbon do this? How does it make four sp3 uh, orbitals with which to bond to four hydrogens? Well, notice up here, carbon doesn't really have any open unpaired electrons for hydrogen to come in and bond with. You know, remember when we, when we make a bond, it's sort of like this. Carbon has an unpaired electron, hydrogen has an unpaired electron, and they say, hey, you know, if we start sharing these, we can make a bond and become more stable. So that's what happens. But again, in carbon's natural lone electron configuration, when it's by itself, it doesn't have any openings. It doesn't have any unpaired electrons for hydrogen to come in and pair with unless it hybridizes its S and P orbitals into SP3 orbitals. So this means one part S, three parts P. It's like we had this S orbital and then we borrowed these three P orbitals down here to make SP3. So now these four electrons, two from here and two from here, are all going to be listed singly and they're all going to contribute one electron to each one of these orbitals so hydrogen can come in to each one and bond. So when carbon's electron configuration looks like this, it can make four single bonds. Okay, the next example. So now we've got an example where carbon is bonded to three different things. We'll look at this carbon. So we have three total regions of electron density. So it is sp2 hybridized. So think about why that would have happened. If carbon wants to bond with three other things, well, it's gonna want three unpaired electrons with which to make bonds. So if we hybridize the P and the S orbitals here, the two P and the two S, by borrowing two of the P orbitals, that's what this means, one part S and two part P. So we started with one S and then we borrow two of the P orbitals. Then we'll use three unpaired electrons in each sp2 orbital that we can make three bonds with. But notice we had a p orbital up here left over and it's still got an unpaired electron up there. And this, this is actually the definition of a pi bond. It's an unused p orbital and that is how you make double bonds. So when you have one unused electron in your p orbital, you can make one double bond. So when carbon's electron configuration looks like this, it can make one, two, three single bonds, and one double bond. So notice how we have one, two, three sigma bonds, and one pi bond. That's where this comes from. Okay, let's look at the final example. So here we've got an example where carbon is bonded to two different things. So here it is sp hybridized. So here's a triple bond and here's a double bond, but remember that's still just one region of electron density, one region of electron density. So if carbon wanted to bond with two things in its outer electron shell, it could mix its 2p and its 2s orbitals to make two open orbitals here. And we'll, so this time we'll only need to borrow one from the p, we'll bring this down, and now we'll have one part s and one part p, and we'll take two of these electrons, split them up so now they're unpaired. So now we can make two single bonds, but look, we had two unused uh, electrons in our p orbital. So those are now available to make double bonds. And they did. So we can make two single bonds, one, two, and then two double bonds. One, two here. You know, kind of two double bonds, that's kind of the triple bond, like the second and the third bond. So when carbon's electron configuration looks like this, we can make two sigma bonds and two pi bonds. So I hope that makes sense. This is certainly a confusing topic. But please contact me if you have any questions at uh, facebook.com slash Tutoring. Thanks a lot, guys.